Spoštovane gledalke, spoštovani gledalci, dobrodošli v odaj intervju. Nocoj imamo prav posebnega gosta in imamo prav posebno temo. Pogovarjali se bomo o kulturnem marksizmu, pogovarjali se bomo o tem, kako levičarska ideologija lahko uniči kulture, civilizacije, cele družbe. Z mano v studiju je poznavalec razmer, predvsem v Južni Ameriki, napisal je dve vse tri knjige, dve prodajamo tudi pri nas, Kulturni marksizem, Kulturna vojna in pa volilne prevare forma Sao Paulo. Z mano v studiju je avtor teh knjig in borec za svobodo in demokracijo, gospod Alejandro Penja Esklusa. Dobro večer, velkam. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here again. I'm very happy to be in Slovenia. Tako, začniva z najno prvo temo, ki je mogoče pomembna za naše gledalce, sploh tiste, ki še niso seznanjeni z vašim delom. Vi ste originalno iz Venezuele, tam to je bila ena najbogatejših držav na svetu, potem pa se je zgodil marksizem, zgodil se je Hugo Chavez, zgodil se je sedaj Maduro in država je postala ena najrevnejših. Kako to, da se je to zgodilo in pa seveda, Kako to, da ste se vi vključili v ta politični boj, v ozaveščanje ljudi? Kaj se lahko zgodi, če zmaga radikalna levica? Well, I began fighting against the Sao Paulo Forum and Hugo Chavez, I remember very clearly, in May of 1995, that is 28 years ago. That was a time when Hugo Chavez inscribed himself in the Sao Paulo Forum. And for me, that was a signal that everything was going to go wrong in my country. Because from then on, he would have all the help from the Latin American left, that is money, uh, advisory relations, to become president of Venezuela, which he did in 1998. And from then, use the wealth of my country based in oil extraction to finance the whole left in Latin America. So I noticed that that was going to happen. And I said, this is very wrong. So I started to publicly in Venezuela warn about this danger. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, people wanted a change, but a change is not always good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A change may be for worst. Mm. And they voted for him. That was the first election he won, uh, let's say, fairly, mm -hmm. because after war, afterwards he uh, committed fraud mm -hmm. uh, all the time. And he began to destroy my country and to export his uh, communist revolution to the rest of Latin America. Mm. That's when I started to write about the Sao Paulo Forum and to also uh, travel all over Latin America to warn other countries about this danger. So it's been, uh, it's been um, 28 years. Uh, this has caused me jail, uh, has caused me persecution, has caused me exile. But I think uh, what I've done is, it's, uh, is right because it is necessary to warn not only Venezuelans that already have this tragedy, but other countries not to fall into the same terrible experience. Zanimivo je, da v bistvu v Južnej Ameriki je bil, imeli smo Kubo, imeli smo potem tudi Venezuelo, ampak je bil nek ta val tega kulturnega marksizma, ki ga je sprožil prav forum Sao Paulo. In kako to, da države, ki so bile do tistega trenutka demokratične ali pa vsaj delno demokratične, da so začele dejansko padati kot domine in da na neki točki praktično ni bilo države v Južni Ameriki, ki ne bi bila članica tega neformalnega združenja? Well, it was a scheme, it was a fraud, not only electoral fraud, but also a conceptual fraud. These guys from the Sao Paulo Forum, they promise that will bring wealth, employment, services, and they attack the system very hard saying that everything is wrong, even though many times that's not true. So people, it's not that they vote for them, they vote for a change, as I said before. They vote to punish uh, uh, governments that maybe have been corrupt or have not uh, um, solved the problems of the people. 
But once they are in power, then they destroy everything. Not only in Venezuela, it's happening right now in Colombia with uh, President Gustavo Petro is destroying everything. And um, it happened also in, in Chile, it happened in, in Bolivia with Evo Morales. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's the same process everywhere. So the first time they vote for them is to punish the other guys. Mm -hmm. And because they want a change. But now they don't want them anymore. And that's why they have to uh, use electoral fraud in order to stay in power, to cheat people, to rig elections, because they don't want them anymore. The problem is that uh, they develop an advanced form of fraud. This I explain in my book about the electoral fraud. They develop a new kind of fraud based on three things that were not before 30 years ago. The electronics, mm -hmm. because 30 years ago, elections were not, uh, were not uh, electronic. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, like in Slovenia or uh, let's say in Colombia, the voting is not electronic, mm -hmm. but the counting is electronic. <laughs> so electronics. The second one is uh, social networks, which were not uh, 30 years ago, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, mm -hmm. they use this massively to cheat uh, what is really going on, to, um, to have this false impression that some uh, candidates are going to win, but it's all social engineering. Mm -hmm. and, third, and third, the massive finance from organized crime, including drug trafficking. So the combination of these three things are very dangerous for our countries. And I can tell you that many of the uh, uh, actual presidents in Latin America, they won, quote, unquote, elections by committing electoral frauds. These frauds, new, advanced, modern, were developed in my country, mm -hmm. in Venezuela. That's why I'm an expert, because I've seen it. Mm -hmm. This was developed during the, for the election of uh, 2004. Mm -hmm. It was a recalled referendum where the Venezuelan people was going to decide if Hugo Chavez would stay or not in power. And he uh, stole two million votes uh, in that election and he said he won. And he stole it using electronic machines and electronic counting. This uh, model was exported to Bolivia. Mm -hmm. This is how Evo Morales committed fraud in the year 2019. And it's also being exported the same method to Africa, to Philippines. It's something new, something very efficient, and it's a big business because uh, uh, they don't rob a, 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 you know, a, a small town or a house, they rob a whole country, so mm. big business. Ampak vseeno, ko smo uh, ravno pri Venezueli, ne, je še veliko primerov prav iz vaše države, ker pri nas nekako vlada prepričanje, ja, ja, pa vse to je neka ideologija, ampak mimo tega pa ne bodo šli, ne bodo posegli v institucije, ne bodo um, kradli glasov in tako naprej. Uh, prosim za naše gledalce, če poveste, kako se je to zgodilo v Venezueli. Je sploh kakšen sistem, ki se ga oni ne bi dotaknili? Well, I would ask uh, our viewers a question. Why study what the left does in Latin America? Mm -hmm. For a European, why it's uh, interesting? Why read a book about the Sao Paulo Forum if the Sao Paulo Forum is far away, mm -hmm. many kilometers away in Latin America? For one reason, the left is articulated all over. They are coordinated internationally. Mm -hmm. They've always done it with the first communist international, mm -hmm. second communist international, third communist international, and the fourth created by uh, Trotsky, as you would remember. Communism is international. Mm -hmm. So they articulate, they hang together, they interchange information and techniques. And it's interesting that the uh, European left does not talk about their plans as the Latin Americans do. But they think the same. Mm -hmm. So if you study, if you listen, if you observe the Latin American left, 
you will probably uh, have the program for the American and European left. So whatever is happening there is probably going to happen in other places. Let's say that Latin America is a, a laboratory where the left makes uh, new experiments mm -hmm. and then they export them. Mm -hmm. The change that we've experienced of democracy becoming tyrannies, it can happen in other places too. Because they do not only cheat, they do not only have this relation with organized crime, at least in Latin America, especially drug trafficking like in my country or in Colombia, but also they use uh, this social engineering program of demolishing uh, Judeo-Christian values mm -hmm. by cultural Marxism, or you can call it uh, progressivism. Mm -hmm. In the United States, you would call it the uh, woke ideology, but it's the same. Mm -hmm. It's going against the principles. It's relativism. This is all written in my book, Kultur uh, uh, na it's, it's It's there. Relativism is, is going against the family, pro-abortion, uh, pro-dissolution of the institutions. Mm -hmm. It's a gender ideology. This is, let me say this. People think wrongly that these ideologies are the result of modernism. They say, well, we're in a new era. Uh, this is spontaneous. I don't know why this is uh, changing so fast, but probably because of the uh, era we're living. But it's not like that. Mm -hmm. It's a plan. It's an organized plan. It was written, it was thought by the founder of the Italian Communist Party, Antonio Gramsci, and then it was implemented by the members of the School of Frankfurt. The three generations of psychologists, philosophers, psychiatrists, mm -hmm. uh, musicologists, that they designed many books, they wrote many books, they did a lot of work, they went to the universities in the United States, Columbia, Columbia University in New York, the University of California, they infiltrated the universities to, uh, let's say, um, put in the young people these ideas mm -hmm. that there's no good, no wrong, everything is relative, and they play their games, their social engineering. So when you have this situation in the United States, and in Europe and in Latin America, where people, they tell them, uh, for example, your sex is not the result of what nature gives you, you know, man or woman, mm -hmm. but it's your own perception. Or when they create this new class struggle categories, mm -hmm. men against women, heterosexuals again, against homosexuals, uh, white against black, or men against uh, climate, mm -hmm. this hysteria, uh, climate hysteria, this slowly, step by step, demolishes the ideas, the, the concepts, the structures, and in that ambience, in that situation, then the left can destroy all institutions mm -hmm. because everything is allowed. Mm Specifično, recimo, v vaših knjigah ste opisali, kako so se volilni odbori spremenili, kako se je nadzorno telo za volitve spremenilo, kako se je ustavno sodišče vse zamenjalo. In pri nas smo imeli podobno situacijo. Pred leti je na poslanka rekla, ni problema, čez nekaj let menjamo ustavne sodnike in bo vse v redu in ljudje niso vreli, da se lahko to zgodi. No danes imamo pa ukinjeno zakonsko zvezo, kot je bila in imamo depolitizirano javno televizijo. Je pot nazaj iz tega stanja, ki se je ustvarilo praktično po receptu Južne Amerike? Well, in, in the case of Slovenia, it, for me, is very difficult to, to have an opinion because I'm, I'm a foreigner, I'm invited here, and I don't want to meddle in, in the uh, internal affairs of this country. 
But as a Latin America, I can tell the Slovenian people and the European people that it's a continent where you learn how the left thinks everywhere. Mm -hmm. What is our experience? Russia and Fidel Castro, they tried to take power through violence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they had these guerrilla groups everywhere. For example, very famous in Colombia is the uh, Re Revolutionary Colombian Armed Forces, FARC, mm -hmm. or the uh, uh, Liberation, National Liberation Army, ELN. Mm -hmm. But in every country of Latin America, there was a pro-Russian, pro-communist, pro-Cuban, guerrilla, violent armed groups mm -hmm. that later became narco guerrilla. They related to drugs. And let's say 20 years, 30 years ago, they started to, to uh, relate themselves with drug trafficking to obtain money. But violence didn't work, as it didn't work either in Europe, because uh, uh, that why the Berlin Wall fell in Europe? Because repression, repression does not work. Mm -hmm. It works for a certain amount of years, but then people want freedom and they rebel against repression, repression mm -hmm. against violence. So this guy, Gramsci, who I dedicate a book, uh, a, a chapter in my book, Antonio Gramsci, mm -hmm. he saw that and he said, this is wrong. The Russian Revolution is recurring to violence to stay in power. This, this is wrong. There must be another way for communism to have a victory, and that is the control of the ideas, mm -hmm. culture. Let's infiltrate universities. Let's infiltrate communication uh, media. Let's uh, infiltrate art, music, painting, literature, and let's convince people of certain ideas. Mm -hmm. And after convincing them, we will take over the country without having to shoot a single bullet. This is what he thought. The people from the School of Frankfurt developed this idea in every uh, section of human knowledge, in every section. As I said before, they wrote thousands of books. Mm -hmm. I, for a fact, um, lived in the United States in 1970, and they were famous. Teodoro Adorno, Herbert Marcuse, Eric Fromms, all my companions in the school and university were reading these ideas of the uh, School of Frankfurt that they were being brainwashed. Mm -hmm. That is how these uh, rock music, uh, uh, hippie movement, Woodstock uh, prod rock concerts, uh, this uh, against uh, Vietnam, but uh, becoming this, um, uh, you know, pr protest against the United States mm -hmm. itself. This is all social engineering. It is difficult for me to explain it in this short interview, but. You will read it in the book, and you will have all the information there. So if you analyze this historically, and you analyze the situation in Latin America, there you will see the future of Europe. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is the left in other parts of the world will do what the left in Latin America are doing today because that is the vanguard, the advance, that is the experiment, the, the laboratory, and since they're all together, they change information, uh, that's why I think it is, is, is necessary to understand that. To what? In order to fight against it, mm -hmm. because uh, some things have been done, must be done. In our, our countries, we need a movement of well-formed citizens, mm -hmm. able to debate with the left, able to study all these things, because it's very easy to debate with them and to defeat them, because ideologies, they're wrong. They don't work. They, they are uh, constructions of, uh, of the mind, but in the real world, they don't work. Mm -hmm. But people is not informed. 
people are ignorant of how cultural Marxism is. So what I'm proposing in every country is a movement of well-informed, well-trained citizens that not only will debate and fight for their ideals, defend their Christian civilization, culture, but also defend their elections from electoral fraud. Because electoral fraud, it, it's being exported everywhere, mm -hmm. especially with this uh, electronic accounting software, which nobody can supervise. Nobody can, nobody know what's going inside the machines. It's better to have manual voting and manual counting as it was in the past. One more thing. A country which is very technologically advanced, like Germany, mm -hmm. electronic voting is uh, specifically prohibited <laughs> because they know it can be tampered with. They know it can be hacked. Mm -hmm. As a, a, your account, banking account can be hacked, an election can be hacked, but the difference is that an election determines the future of that country. That is why every country needs a movement of well-trained citizens. It's not enough voting. Mm -hmm. Going and vote, not enough. You need people who understand this. And I believe that my, uh, my both books, uh, Kulturna Vojna and Volidna Prevari, I think they're very uh, interesting as a manual mm -hmm. for citizens to understand how this works and how to defeat this uh, social engineering attack against the identity of our countries. Če samo za trenutek še ostane va pri, pri Južni Ameriki in pri dogodkih, zdaj ste rekli, da se to izvaža po svetu, ta model, te prevare se izvažajo po svetu, ampak mene zanima, glede na to, kaj se dogaja v Južni Ameriki, kako lahko kdorkoli, kjerkoli na svetu sploh sprejme tak model, se pravi, vidimo, zapira se kandidate za, za predsednika tik pred volitvami, strelja se ljudi na, na ulicah, ki samo merno protestirajo, države so vse bolj revne in revne, milijone in milijone venezuelcev recimo beži iz svoje države. Kako lahko to kamorkoli izvoziš, da bi ljudje to sploh kupili, sploh sprejeli? Well, partly because uh, they don't know what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, people are worried about their jobs, about their surviving, about their local uh, situation. And sometimes they think, well, this is happening somewhere else, but it will not happen here. Mm -hmm. But that's, uh, that's a wrong way to think because this model, it is exportable. Mm -hmm. I will give you an example. Uh, last month in September, I gave a conference in Africa mm -hmm. about my book, Volina Prevare, because this book is translated from Spanish into English and also into Portuguese. Mm -hmm. So there are countries like Angola, mm -hmm. they speak Portuguese mm -hmm. because it used to be a, a Portuguese colony. But there were representatives in that, it was a Congress, mm -hmm. and there were people, delegations from different African countries. I gave my book in Portuguese to one of the leading uh, Angolan opposition uh, figures. His name is Adalberto Costa Jr. He read the book before giving his conference in that Congress. And he said, not only to me, but he said it in the, in the Congress, to the public, there were the uh, newspapers there. Mm -hmm. He showed my book in Portuguese. Polina Prevale, he showed it. And he said, these books explain how they rigged the elections in my country, Angola. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, the same, uh, it's the same, let's say, script that they do all over. Mm -hmm. So in order to avoid this to happen, that's why I said that, that citizens must be informed it's not enough voting, it's not enough being informed about your national situation. 
it is important to understand what's going on in other places internationally because it, it has consequences in your country. Mm -hmm. Either if you want it or not, either if you know it or not, mm -hmm. it, more and more international things have to do with your own survival and your own home. Mm -hmm. So people don't know these things, and I, what I'm trying to do with my books, they have a characteristic, my, my books. I, I've written 10 books. Mm -hmm. But these two last ones, they have a characteristic. Very short, very easy to read. It's a, a narrative is, is, is very understandable. Mm -hmm. And if you want to know more about it, well, you have the footnotes where it tell you where to find more information. Mm -hmm. But I would say that my, both of my books are an eye opener, an incentive for people to investigate. But nowadays, you have to know what's going over in the world because it'll influence your own life and the lives of your kids. And as I said several times in this interview, the future of the European left, you can see it in Latin America because there's where they develop their strategy and then they export them. Uh, it, they can be defeated, but it's important to know them, to understand them, to study them. And I have the optimism and the hope that uh, at the end they will not prevail. Pomembno je, uh, omenili ste našo zahodno krščansko civilizacijo in uh, tudi moje vprašanje je, tudi Južna Amerika je celotna, praktično krščanska, pa so tam te ideje komunizma najbolj zacvetele. Uh, prvič, kako je to možno, da v krščanski družbi tako močno uh, zazori nek, nek uvoženi marksizem. Druga pomembna stvar pa je, Tudi v Evropi je ta val sekularizma in kristijane porinil v ilegalo, praktično. Je čas, da se tudi mi začnemo zavedati, da moramo prispevati k družbi, da smo poklicani, da prispevamo k družbi in da smo nosilec določenih sprememb. Well, I must clarify one thing about Latin America. Just... Uh, just for our viewers to understand. I wouldn't say that a Christian continent became a Marxist continent. It is a Christian continent. It continues to be a Christian continent, Latin America, who voted for Marxist people who disguise themselves as non-Marxist. Hmm? Chavez never said he was a Marxist when he won the election. He said the opposite. <laughs> he said, I'm not a communist, <laughs> but he was. Mm -hmm. Petro in Colombia didn't say, I'm a communist. He didn't say that. And Lula in Brazil, he didn't say that. Mm -hmm. They just attacked the system and they said, I'm the solution. They lied, mm -hmm. they lied. And they posed a program and they started to do the opposite. Hmm. So, at the end, people rejected them. Mm -hmm. Very, uh, in the case of Venezuela, for example, the reason why Maduro is still in power is because of electoral fraud and because he's imposing himself with uh, terror, mm -hmm. uh, killing people, having uh, political prisoners, prisoners like, like myself. Mm -hmm. I was in year, uh, one year in jail just for speaking the truth, you know? Mm -hmm. But I was not the only one. And the hundreds mm -hmm. and the young youngsters being kid, killed in the streets mm -hmm. because they were protesting peacefully against this model. So my hope is that uh, Latin America continues to be Christian and they have not managed to destroy our moral values. Mm -hmm. That's why they're going to be defeated. That's why I am, I am optimistic. Regarding the other thing, I would say that in the United States and Europe, the work of Gramsci and the School of Frankfurt has been more profound, more systematic, and, and more effective. Mm -hmm. 
So they've been destroying the values systematically. Um, but what you were saying, Gramsci said it explicitly, Antonio Gramsci, in his books, written from jail because he was put in jail. Uh, he said, Marxism and Christianity cannot coexist. In order for Marxism to triumph over the European countries, Christianity must be destroyed first. And this is what they've been doing ever since. They've been trying to introduce materialism through different, uh, let's say, channels, mm -hmm. including, of course, culture, mm -hmm. and including, of course, university. Materialism and these books that uh, brainwash people, uh, like the ones I mentioned before, Teodoro Adorno, Herbert Marcuse, who was one of the authors of the process, intellectual authors of the protest in, uh, in, in France in 1968, what is called uh, the um, French May, where the universities, uh, pro, pro young people protest against the system. Mm -hmm. Not to obtain anything, but just go against the system, go against religion mm -hmm. uh, and disruption. So this Marcuse, it's, it's very important. Uh, also, as I said before, uh, Eric Fromm. But all the members of the Frankfurt School, because they had people all over writing uh, books and giving lectures. So they've been trying to destroy Christianity. But we, I'm a, I'm a Catholic. I, th I think we must not uh, listen to them to what the society, the modern society says, that you have to be uh, hidden to defend your uh, whatever idea, mm -hmm. whatever. Not only your religion, but your thoughts about family, your thoughts about politics. Mm -hmm. We have to defend what we think. That's what I uh, said that it's necessary to be able to debate. Because the left, they train their members mm -hmm. to debate. Not to win uh, fairly, but mostly saying lies mm -hmm. or defending their ideologies. Mm -hmm. But we don't train our members because usually, let's say, center or right-wing governments, they dedicate themselves to the economy, mm -hmm. to develop, to build housing, to uh, create better conditions for the population. But they've forgotten about the culture. The center and right wing have not given the cultural battle. And I think the time has come to defend our culture and to know our culture. Mm -hmm. In my book, uh, Kulturna Vojna, I speak about the importance of uh, reading and knowing the classics. Mm -hmm. uh, all youngsters should read at least one or two books of uh, a place of uh, Shakespeare, Cervantes, should uh, listen to Mozart, to Beethoven, Pergolesi, or Haydn, or see the paintings of uh, Rafael Sancio and know their own history, that is. I'm not saying returning to the classics, no. I'm saying that to know the classics are the founders of our civilization, mm -hmm. it's important to know what you're defending. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in a group yesterday putting an experiment of comparing uh, Mozart's a Requiem with disco music and then with uh, reggaeton music. Mm -hmm. and, and when you put that in a row, <laughs> the difference is, is it's impressive. Mm -hmm. And most, most youngsters have never read the Cervantes or a Shakespeare book, or have heard that there's a entirely uh, a concert of classical music, and because uh, it's it's a plan, it's a plan to kidnap that, to hide that, anything that has to do with Christian culture, civilization, and to present all this materialism that is prevailing today. We have to fight. And the Zakai, Zakai. Oni potem ugrabljajo kršćanske vrednote in jih prodajajo kot leve vrednote. 
Well, I, I think they, uh, I don't know how to explain it because it's a, a little bit irrational, but I think these uh, uh, Marxists, they hate Western civilization because it's the opposite of what they believe. Mm -hmm. they're, um, they're full of resentment and they want to destroy, supposedly to create a new civilization. The destruction in order to create something new. But this process of destruction is evil uh, and is irrational. For example, this situation of illegal migrants. Uh, they're pushing, for example, the Latin American, uh, there was a meeting uh, two weeks ago in Mexico where the Latin American left leaders were saying that the uh, countries should have open borders, totally free for everybody to, to go to those places. They've seen, I'm sure, the, uh, the images in Lampedusa, Italy, mm -hmm. where hundreds, thousands of migrants are coming. And they've seen what's happening in the southern borders of the United States, or the protest uh, of, uh, of foreigners in France. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that we don't have to help the migrants because I'm a migrant. I'm a migrant here in Europe. So migrants, I understand their situation. But that's one thing. And the other thing is to let in thousands of thousands of people that you're not able to absorb. And also many of them illegal and many of them ideas anti-West. Mm -hmm. So you must, in order to help other people, you must protect your home. Mm -hmm. You must have your situation control in your home in order to help others. Mm -hmm. But this leftist ideology wants to destroy our nations. That's not the only example. Mm -hmm. There is this other example, which also is irrational. This determination to destroy family mm -hmm. through gender ideology, through abortion, through sexual liberation. That is irrational. The most important thing of a society is a family composed of dad, mom, kids with values. Mm -hmm. And from then on, from that single, uh, let's say, uh, identity or entity, you build a society. So they want to destroy that. Mm -hmm. In Latin America, the left, they're promoting drug consumption. This is destroying the minds of our kids. Mm -hmm. So. Does that have a rational explanation? No, it is irrational. But you must study how it works in order to defend society, family, and country from that kind of ideology. Zakonec morda prebral sem pred dnevnik tweet, kjer je bilo zelo nedvoumno rečeno, če sedaj ne začnemo se boriti, če se sedaj ne začnemo organizirati, nam naši otroci ne bodo nikoli odpustili, da se nismo borili takrat, ko je bil čas za to. Mogoče vlučiti celega tega najnega pogovora in za zaključno misel en komentar tega, kje smo trenutno v procesu boja za svobodo, za demokracijo in koliko moramo še vložiti v ta boj. Well, from the theological point of view, we have the promise that uh, good will triumph over evil. So that's theological. From the rational point of view, uh, reason tells us that evil is not self-sustainable. Evil is a very efficient destroying, mm -hmm. but it's not self-sustainable. So. Sooner or later, as would happen with communism mm -hmm. in, uh, in Eastern and Central Europe, mm -hmm. it destroys itself. So that's also optimism for us. But thirdly, fighting to defend your values, to defend uh, your family, to defend your country, to defend this beautiful Western civilization that we inherit, mm -hmm. it should be a joyable thing. We should enjoy it. For example, 
I enjoy a lot doing what I do. It's, it's, it's good. Uh, you meet people, you try to explain your experience to other people, you find the good mm -hmm. in other countries and civilizations. So let me put it this way. The joy of defending your values is not just a duty. It's something um, that must make you feel, inspire you. Mm -hmm. So we have all these promises, we have this rationality, we have this duty for our, our future generations. So we have to have hope and optimism and to continue to fight, mm -hmm. uh, expecting the best. Then we're not who decide. God is the one who decides. He is the author and the Lord of history. Mm -hmm. We just do the daily work and we must enjoy to do that work. Gospod Alejandro Penez Klusa, najlepša hvala za to, da ste se mi na coj pridružili v studiju. Najlepša hvala, da ste bili tukaj z nami in delili svoje misli. Žal se je čas za to odajo iztekal, ampak še enkrat najlepša hvala, da ste se vzeli čas in da ste bili na coj moj gost. Oh, thank you for inviting me. I'm very happy to be in Slovenia, as I said before, and I wish you all the best. Tako, spoštovani gledalke, spoštovani gledalci, hvala pa tudi vam za pozornost. Preberite obe knjigi, toplo priporočamo Forum Sao Paolo Kulturna vojna in pa Forum Sao Paolo Volilne prevare oziroma Volilne prevare Forum Sao Paolo. V obeh boste našli kar predsejšnje primarjave za Slovenijo. Veliko je podobnih stvari, le da mogoče pri nas niso tako očitne ali tako brutalne kot v Južni Ameriki. Se pa splača prebrati kot priročnik. Želim vam vsem lep večer, razmišljajte svojo glavo, lahko noč.